I don't always know the best angle to begin things here on Indian Trace when I have a lot to show. But after about a two-week period, no longer than a two-week period, maybe a week, there's a stellar stone I found just the other day at the Cove. There's a good story behind this stone. It's a fantastic hammer stone. If you have good eyes and your educated eye in artifacts and understanding tools, this is, a, this is an awesome stone. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I have quite a few things to show here. I tried to make a video the other day, messed up, big time. Now, it was pretty good. It came out because I was going to show a lot of the stuff. And, uh, you know, just sort of the, the, the mind frame that I go through week by week. And now after about a two-week total, you're seeing right here just a class of artifacts that I'm going to talk about. But then here, and some great pottery. Just a great view with natural light. I'm excited about it. Whether it's an absolutely awesome hammerstone here, if I don't get in the shadow of it, and it is a really great piece. No, there is a shadow. Usually there's not. I, I do it at different times, but uh, we'll get into this in a little bit. It's a quartzite you're looking at, but it's so worn off that it gets to a different color stone. On the, on the There's a cortex type of stone, and then it gets to another type of stone on the inside. We'll get to that. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Another group with another uh, defining... Uh, explanation. And the reason I say that is because we're going to go through my categories uh, to try to give you an idea. Many of you who are just beginning hunting have seen some of these videos. You've seen the video where I found this nice blade. Now this is only in the last maximum two weeks, last week and a half. This fantastic scraper that we're going to check out is not on video, but it's a great piece. This was on video. That's why these are in the middle. These, this one was, this one was, this one was. There's a couple comments that I have today about those. These two have not been. My goodness, right? I mean, that looks like a picture from a flat-out magazine. Now I'm going to correct something. Because, well, I don't need to correct it because it was a mistake and I couldn't stand it, so I deleted the last video I tried to make uh, in this variety. And we have a lot of things to look at. But I had called rightly this a Dalton. Now these are gifts. You might recognize the work already. We'll get into it in a minute. And I had called this something that I'm not even going to say, although it's a Harden. And uh, they were gifts for some of the artifacts here in North Carolina that I was able to share. And these are extremely special gifts. Take a look closely. And I want to let you know, if you're a beginner, if you're out there collecting, some of you who have educated eyes know already, these are from a modern napper. These are modern North American Indian hunting points. But with that said, I have plenty. And I really, I really cater in the authentic stuff. That's just what I find. I don't nap. Uh, I just decided not to take it up. A lot of these, maybe one or two, are not going to do it. But most of these here in this group are what I call my class ones. And then I have my class Fours back here, my C4s. Look at this. Look at this. We're going to go by it. Even look at it in the reflection. My goodness, look at this. About 60. We're talking about the outside two weeks, week and a half. So I can't leave them out there. And looking from a distance, you'll see how much I'm talking about here. Look at the great color. They may join my koi pond. Somebody beats me to it. Drops me a, a note, text, says, listen, I'm going to send you 50 bucks. Send me the whole flat out box. I mean, there's about 60 pieces here. Great artifacts. We'll get a close-up. But here's where we're going. Don't want to get confused. As we look over this, we're going to go over C4s, which are these. We're going to go over C3s, which are artifacts that are awesome. But I'm going to give them away. I'm going to find a good home. I'm going to uh, get them off one way or another. I'm going to use them for trade or whatever I need to. These are absolutely incredible pieces as well. Nothing wrong with these. Guilford, I found the other day, didn't get it on film. Great pieces. This is going to be funny today. It looks like I'm already working with a shadow. And I have a, a, a different type of uh, veil over the window, so I'm surprised there's so much light that I'm going to get a shadow. C3s. My C2s are things like, uh, if I just grab a piece here and show you. This I found at the Archaic just yesterday. And it's the base of a Crystal Guilford. I'm looking forward to finding my first real Crystal Guilford. I found some Quartz Crystal Guilfords. But I mean, just a stellar piece. This is so balanced. And it would have been 
an awesome piece. I mean, it would have been well as long as, as my middle finger. I mean, this is, this is a, a nice piece. But this is like a C2, which go in my heartbreaker space. That's going to go with the C3s up here. And then we're going to go to my C, my class 1s, which go in my display box. It's fun stuff. And then I have a completely different box for things like that have been gifted to me. I have been privileged to be able to collect, and it's a really neat, uh, as we look at this just for a second, and I'll tell you about it, it's a really neat small collection uh, that features the workmanship of three artists in our community here on Indian Trace that love uh, the artifacts and the archaeology of the North American Indian. And I sort of keep it limited, but I'm privileged, I'm really blessed to be able to have the workmanship of these three artists. And uh, this is also a shout out and a thank you video, as you might have already called it, to Paleo Man 52. Ken, these pieces are awesome. We're going to take a look at it. I, want, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Everybody, let me bring you through the mind frame of how I have to clear things every couple weeks or every week. And it's going to get busy. I, I have a feeling about it. We had a lot of rain. I have some good sites to look at. I just want to give you a little tour in, of these C4 artifacts. These are either going to my koi pond or uh, for whatever reason, whatever agreement struck up or whatever uh, comes up. And many of you have already experienced it. I'm going to get them somewhere to someone for something. How about that, right? I couldn't say that again. Get them somewhere for someone. For something, for some reason. There's some great stuff here, as you can see. But for whatever reason in my heart, and it's always about how our heart categorizes artifacts, this is great looking rhyolite from eastern central North Carolina. Some great pieces and quartz, rhyolite tips, some good finds. But C4, nevertheless, meaning uh, I'm fine to put it out in my koi pond. I've got thousands out there. Makes a, a good looking. Uh, decoration, Georgia Rob and Terry, you've seen it. They've been in my backyard before. And, and uh, it, it just makes for a pretty cool looking display. So, uh, you know, I'm just so fortunate to have the kind of ancient Indian, North American Indian life around here that's just so abundant. And I wanted to make this video just to show the way, the mind frame a little bit, the progression of a collector. And I know there's a lot of you guys out there really just getting things kicked off who are new or interested or if you're like me and you've been collecting a little while and we haven't been collecting very long at all compared to some of our senior collectors here who are over 20, 30 years collecting. But if it's me, I always know that I can learn something new every single day about how to gain and save these artifacts of the North American Indian better. But what happens is in my brain, I have to figure out a better way to prioritize a better way to categorize the artifacts that I find. Got to do it. For example, those are C4s. Why? Because I've got C3s, which to me are fantastic pieces. You know, and it could change. Another piece, such as a, maybe a nice rhyolite point like this, which I really love, that's why it's here, could jump over to a C3 where I'm, I'm willing to give it or I'm willing to trade it. At the same time, I, I, I got a note that came in as we look at, take a look at these C3s. I had a note that came in and said, uh, you know, Indian Trace, uh, I don't know how your collection ever grows any. You're giving a lot of stuff away. Well, maybe. But believe it or not, I've got fantastic pieces that I find that continue to trickle in, which I never trade and I never sell. Now, I can say that because I don't really feel selfish about it because... I've been so fortunate to be able to give and to be able to get a lot of this really great North American Indian artifacts into the hands of people who can't find it, who have been locked out of land, uh, who by law can't go out there or by health and fitness can't do it. And I want to inspire them. And then the community continues to step up, all of you guys, making a difference in other people's lives is really what it's about. And the generosity trait in the North American Indian was something that catapulted them up to uh, honor and esteem. That's a big point, isn't it? That's a nice point. Anyway, for whatever reason, you see something that you absolutely love. 
you can always make whatever kind of offer you want. Like in Indian, I'm always open to barter. I'm always open to persuasion, to making a trade or what have you. It's just the way life is, you know, the circle of life. Those are C, uh, C3 artifacts, which means they're, they're ready to travel. <laughs> I brought them out and saved them, but they're ready to travel. And of course the pottery is, which to me, this is the C3 pottery. It's fantastic. Just this week, good finds. And here's another piece of pottery down here, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell the story behind this. I found this at the Archaic, which has been putting out really big piece of pottery that uh, if I can get the focus working, if I can, there we go, that I love. And as uh, a friend of mine on YouTube was telling me about this pottery, he believed that the clay was packed inside woven or wicker baskets, reed baskets, or even linen uh, that they made out of textile, packed in there and then fired which then leaves the remaining evidence on the outside of the texture, uh, which was a fantastic idea. I thought I never had thought about how it was made. I thought they stamped it, but it doesn't make sense that they would, they could have, I could be wrong, but they would, they would stamp it to this degree. It looks clearly like it was pressed into a, a reed basket of some, tor of some sort and then fired. But this was found at the archaic, which is putting out a lot of this older type of pottery. And I think it's cured, if you call it that, fired. Uh, and the temper of the, the sand and the quartz crystals you see there uh, bring it to uh, a curing, if you will. That's a great piece of pottery. I put it there because I'm going to keep that one. I do keep a very selective amount of the pottery that I find. I love it. No, no doubt about it. So before we get into these, which are my C1s, which are, which are for certain reasons looking like they're heading towards a, my top shelf display stuff. Now, remember, we got a different display altogether for this kind of stuff. Modern masters, right? But the progression in my mind every week, and take a look at this excellent hammerstone from the cove. I think within the last 48 hours, I found this piece. It's funny because the cove, the story behind this, and, and take a look at this. This stone has certain things about it that are not made by the plow and that are not natural. Like the... And you guys who are nappers, even Ken, who nap these, which are awesome, will love these aspects of these hammer stones. We all do. Because the top of this is, see there? That's not a mistake. Something was going on there. Every single hammer stone I find has that kind of pitting. It's not a nutting stone. And on the other side, usually I felt it with my other finger. You have the same scoring. You know, I had a buddy uh, recently who's been on YouTube and... Many of you have seen his videos, and he works hard at saving artifacts. Say that he believes that the uh, billets, the antler billets that they were used to nap all of these type of points, uh, he, they were re-priming them in these little pitted areas on these hammer stones to bring those antlers down to a place where they're really workable. And then, of course, multi-tool-wise, and we all love multi-tools, this stone is flat on the edges, which we all love. This piece, if you could feel it in your hand, look at it, has had some hard work on the base. Some hard work. Knocked a piece right off there, that's an old break, not a plow break, look at this. Hard work. And then, we've got work going down the edges that are just so repetitive, and for such a long work zone, work time. And Rob, you made some good points. There was another point out there by good thinkers about artifacts that these stones probably were made fairly quickly within years, if not months, because of how much use uh, they were subject to. And they were. Which brings up a point I made in the other video that I really wanted to make on this one. Look at this, this edge right here. I mean, this is a working stone. If you guys know artifacts, if you know hammer stones... This is a brilliant piece. Carries a lot more energy because this is a stone that they used to produce lots and lots of little pieces of stone that they could make these out of, which were vital, which were so important. Look at these. We're going to talk about them in a second. So this stone here, and my thought was this, you know, why do we collect round stones 
<laughs> Hammer stones. Look at the pity on that. Great stone. Why do we collect the pottery? But more so, why do we collect all of these artifacts that we've looked at today? Why? It's not just because some of them are valuable. It's not because we just want rocks in a, in a frame. It's not just because we love the North American Indian. I knew inherently that something else was going on. As we look at my C1s, look at this blade. Great thing about this. I'm telling a story still. I know I'm not getting lost in my thoughts. I know you'd like that right there. Some of you who haven't seen it. Just unique off the back. Just the way they wanted to make that. Uh, you know, why? Why are you interested? Why are you tuning in here? Why do we collect these? It's not just that they're cool or that they represent the North American Indian. It's got to be more than that. You're a human being. You're much deeper. We are much deeper. Let's see which one next. Look at this too. Got this out there at uh, Hidden Hill the other day. It was a great little point. Really great piece. And uh, as my time clicks along, I don't want to take too long. Look at this. Gotta love a scraper. Can't tell you how many raccoons and possums and rabbits and hides that was conditioned with this piece of stone. I mean, they take as many rabbits and raccoons and squirrels as you could bring in every day and they use the hides. Lots of uses for all the different types of hides. And they needed stones like that to produce them. So why, why do we love these artifacts? And I really have come to the conclusion after a lot of prayer and just asking God, why this community? Why you like artifacts? Why I do? Uh, look at this piece. I mean, why? And I think it's because in terms of humanity, they represent a seriously uh, binding need. Really, a need that binds us together, which is food, which is survival, sustenance. Without this technology, without lithics, without figuring out a way to make these armor-piercing tips, using them, I mean, whether it's a fantastic piece like this, crazy, right? Give me an idea of the size of that. For those of you who haven't tuned in, a lot of you have seen it. It's a big piece. Without this kind of technology, without being able to make these, which, of course, this was vital in, hammerstone like that, I don't even think it's focusing. There we go. Bringing along things like this. But, without taking too long, and it's getting too long. You know, my thought was this. What I think interests us the most, which sometimes it can't be put into words, is that we fellowship with a need that was so dire. I mean, it was either that, either survival or extinction. Many clans of early North American archaic and Paleo-Indians perished of starvation. They perished because they could not attain the game. Something wasn't working. Something went wrong. Love this point. This was on film, but just to show you that, that's going in there. It's a very thick, great base from Hidden Hill. To me, just a fantastic rhyolite piece, nice and thick. Love it. And so for me, I'm seeing more and more that the reason something's clicking for us all and we have a really strong community of great people is because this stuff, even if it's the ancient North American Indian stuff we're looking at here, which represents thousands of years right here. Just some great looking stuff. Or stuff that we use as stir up our memory and stir up our hope of finding a piece such as this. It's because we cross paths with a dire need, which is survival, resilience, necessity. Look at these pieces from Ken as we finish off. The Harden. <laughs> I called it some other crazy name, and I knew there'd be a lot of people mad at me for calling it the wrong thing. But, uh, you know, I try to learn. Uh, it's an absolute fantastic ancient hunting point. I'm sure somebody who made it, and some guys in some parts of the country, whether it's ditch walk or whatever, actually find points to this degree. I've seen Treasure Hunter for Life find points that are just, just nuts. And all my thanks again, Ken. You guys will recognize that. You guys probably recognize this because they put this stuff on film before as favorites. And uh, <laughs> what can you say? You know, I just appreciate that he, that he likes me, <laughs> that he shared these. 
uh, with me. So I hope you've tuned in today to see these absolutely incredible pieces of art uh, that represent the North American Indian. And I have a great frame, a great glass covering that he sent with it. It's great stuff. Look at that piece. A Harden. And then, of course, a Dalton. Everybody, many of us have people who, if it's not yourself, think these are favorites. Now, I've seen some Creek Dalton or whatever just find some incredible pieces like this. I can't even imagine coming close to finding a piece like this. But I find some really nice pieces. Could find some tomorrow. So as this video goes a little bit longer, just a little bit of chat today, just look at the absolute excellent work from Mr. Wallace. Can I appreciate it? Those are great tributes to the North American Indian. I mean, just stellar to me. Just mind-blowing. I love it. Because to me, what I see is that we need to remember the state, the resilience that these North American Indians were in and the dire need that they were indicating with these. They didn't expect nor think that they would last 5,000 years, 6,000 years for you and me to pick up and collect. Oh, but their lives did and the expression of who they were as people tells us so much, whether it's the pottery or the points. So I really appreciate you tuning in to Indian Trace, everybody. Don't really know how to finish this off. I mean, we could spend some time with this artifacts, and I really wanted to do that to give you a chance just to spend some time looking at some artifacts up close, new, newly found, all of this. None of this is old in terms of being found. I mean, this came in the mail this week. Sweet stuff. You can't beat that. I mean, my word, my word. Looks like a picture in a book of the Smithsonian. Well, but from Hammerstones, back to you. Look at that Hammerstone, will you? Mercy. Don't ever know how a profile picture comes out. I don't know. I can't, I can't make it happen. Uh, but uh, a profile picture, I mean, it could just do it. To me, it seems so random. So I always try to set up little different things when I'm filming so that it's a possibility that the, the profile picture will give me something that's pretty cool to put up. All in all, I just want to thank you for tuning in to Indian Trace. Where should I stop showing people? I'm bringing you into a world and a rhyme and reason that I have to cover every week. And some of you are just bored with artifacts who... You, can, you could have turned it off a long time ago and you wouldn't have known I even said that. One of my favorite pieces this week is this one, so I'll probably stop it with this. Thanks again for tuning in to Indian Trace. And that right there, that's Indian Trace.